Hi, I'm Stephen. This is um, Opus Renovations, the new Kitchen Co. And this is a very short video, I hope, all about the Metabo TS254 table saw. It's a sight table saw. I'm doing this review because I've got one, because I've had it for two and a half years, and because I've had some problems with it. And uh, if you've got one and you're considering buying one, then I hope this review will help you choose the right bits and make the right decision. Uh, let's start by having a look at the saw itself and I'll tell you a bit about it. All right, listen in. So here it is, this is the uh, Metabo. The TS254. Now, this is a sight saw. I've been using this for a couple of years, as I say. When I had it originally, the first 18 months, it was used on site. It's got a really clever leg arrangement that's built into it and wheels, which make it really easy to lug around. It's not light, but it's relatively easy to lug around. And because the legs are built into the whole thing, it's really easy to set up on site in a matter of moments. It's got dust extraction. It's got a reasonable fence that clamps well. There's some bits which are not on here at the moment because I don't use them very often. I also took off the uh, blade guard because it just gets in the way for the sort of sawing I'm usually doing. Um, all the controls down here. Uh, blade height, wind that thing down, is there. Uh, you can release that and you can change the angle of the blade uh, once this is set up once this is set up it's quite an accurate thing and it's easy to repeat there's an adjustment screw in there which you can use for setting the zero standard no starts um, on off on there um, there's some hooks and brackets and bits on it um, there's a push stick somewhere to wrap the cable. Um, generally, just a reasonable saw. Um, so, why do a review on it now? Well, as I say, it's used on site and now it's used in the workshop. Um, I'm making this little video in November. Uh, back in January, it broke. Uh, the bit that broke uh, this is the uh, this is the motor assembly out of it. The bit broke. This is the uh, the lift screw. So inside the saw, behind that handle you saw me turn, there's a little bevel gear onto this, and the bevel gear turns this, and this moulding that is the front of the motor and holds the kerfing uh, uh, riving blade um, also has this bracket on it which is internally threaded it's a, it's a aluminium molding or die casting um, and it's got a thread in it uh, and as this is turned by the uh, bevel gear it lifts and lowers this uh, this is usually sitting on a couple of machined rails which is which are fixed into the uh, frame of the machine and it slides up and down on them with the blade on here um however for those uh, who are technically minded you'll notice this thread is just a standard fairly fine pitch not very deep uh, standard probably 60 degree thread uh, and as you might see just here can you see this bits of metal wrapped around it. That's because it's failed again. So back in January it failed, or December actually last year it failed. I ordered this piece um, from a third party supplier. They shipped it to me, it was a genuine Metabo part. I fitted it back then and it's failed again. Uh, so this now doesn't need to turn, it just slides up and down because it stripped the thread out of here. So what did I do? Um, I used social media. Uh, I posted 
on Instagram a little video of it being broken and copied in Matabo UK and uh, they were fairly quick to respond. Uh, within a week I'd spoken to their brand manager uh, who was very keen to make sure that this was put right. I guess they don't want to know, they want everyone knowing that the machine they're supplying at 500 quid, uh, which is clearly marked for professional site use, uh, fails twice in a year for the same reason. Uh, so what do they do? They sent me a box full of bits. Uh, one box. Um, they sent me a brand new complete motor assembly like this, um, fully assembled, ready to install, which is what I actually installed, which is why this one is now out of the machine. They also sent me a spare set of parts, and I'm gonna try and show you what it is they sent me and why it's important to talk about this right now. I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna put the camera down, and uh, you can watch me struggling to open this bag. Um, it's really interesting that they sent me an extra set of parts. It allows me to mend the saw, and it also allows me to show you why I think they know that there's a fault, and why, if you're considering buying one of these, you need to uh, actually have a look under the saw before you hand over your money uh, to make sure it's the right version. So, remember I showed you that uh, thread? Remember I showed you this thread on here, really fine pitched. Here's the replacement part. So, let's see if I can just balance these next to each other so you can see both at the same time. And then you'll understand why this is significant. This is called a buttress thread. Um, this is perhaps what you'd expect to see if you were an engineer and you were designing this part. Um, it's the same, it's, it's a thread which is designed to push uh, along its axis. Uh, it's the same thread you'll find in the bottom of your vise. If you've got any kind of uh, professional vise, you see, buttress thread. Why is it like that? Because it's really good at pulling. Uh, it's designed to take those loads and it's not just this part of it, but the moulding itself if you'll be able to see this, there you go. The moulding itself has a, obviously a matching thread. So, eight minutes into this video. Um, what am I gonna say? First thing I'm gonna say is I've used this saw for two and a half years, I'm very pleased with it. It works very reliably, it cuts straight, uh, the fence is okay given that it's not the most expensive saw in the world. You can lug it around, you can throw it in your van, you can take it to site, you can set it up in minutes. It works very well, dust extraction is reasonable, the parts supplied with it are good. Um, and ultimately, Matabo's customer service has been exemplary because they didn't send me a bill for all those bits, which I'm very pleased about. They didn't offer to come and fit them for me, which is a shame because it would have saved me an hour or so doing it myself. But nevertheless, they gave me the parts and my saw is up and running again within a week. Um, the message I guess is, don't be afraid of buying one, but do make sure you have a look at the thread on the lift mechanism and make sure that it's a buttress thread version. If you're buying one which has got the old fine tooth thread on it that mine had, it's probably going to fail in the same way, and that's just a load of hassle. So there you go. That's uh, my uh, probably just under 10 minutes of wisdom for a Sunday afternoon. Stephen signing out from the new kitchen company and opens renovations. Bye.